GIMP version 2.8 has an updated text tool and it has a lot of nice new features. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use this tool. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how easy it is to make this text layout that you see right here. So let's start with a blank canvas. I'll go up to the File menu and select New. And I'll use a width of 640 and a height of 400. And then press OK. The new text tool is selected by pressing this button right here. Then just come over to the canvas, press and hold the mouse button while you drag and this will set the size of the area for your text. And then just start typing. And over here in the tool options section, you can change the font with this button right here. Just press it and then you can select the font that you'd like to use. You can set the size here. You can use the little up-down arrows here on the right side, or you can directly enter values in. Click the Use Editor checkbox if you would like to use a separate editor to enter your text with. But one of the new features in GIMP 2.8 is the ability to edit your text right on the canvas. So I'm not going to be using this separate editor here, so I'll go ahead and close that. There's a checkbox here for anti-aliasing, and this is used to smooth the edges of the text. If I uncheck this box, then you can see that the edges of the text are a little bit rougher. And I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this better. And then by setting the checkbox for anti-aliasing, you can see that the edges are now smoother. There's also a drop-down box here to set the hinting and hinting modifies the character so that the small fonts will look clear. And there are several settings that you can select. And I just typically keep it on the default setting of medium. And you can set the color by clicking on this box right here. And then you just choose a color and press OK. And there are four justify settings here. And to show you how these work, I'm going to enter in some new text and I'm going to use a size of 50. And I've copied the text to my clipboard already, so I'm just going to delete this text here and paste in the new text. And you might notice that I'm using a box type down here of fixed, and there are no carriage returns in this text. So if I change the size of the text box, you'll see that the text word wraps, so that any word that doesn't fit on a line is displayed on the line below it. Now up here in the Justify section, there are four different types. Currently, Left Justified is selected, so all of the text is aligned on the left side. You can select Right Justify, and all the text is aligned on the right. Or you can select Center, and all of these lines of text are now centered. Or you can use Filled, and this aligns the text on the left and the right side, and it adjusts the space in between the words to achieve this alignment. So I'll go back to Left Justify. This next option right here allows me to adjust the indentation of the first line. So if I increase it, you can see that my indentation is now increased. The next option right here allows me to adjust the spacing between the lines. And so I can increase that or I can decrease it to bring the lines closer together. And this next option allows me to adjust the spacing in between the letters. So if I increase this, you can see the spacing increases. And then I can also bring the letters really close together. This next option is the box type. We've been using a fixed box type, and that allows us to change the size of the box and then the words will do word wrap in order to fit everything in the box. But I'll show you what dynamic does. But first, I'm going to delete most of this text here. And then I'll select a box type of dynamic. And when I do this, the box is automatically sized to the text that I'm entering. So let me continue to enter some text in here. And when I have this on dynamic, it's not going to automatically word wrap for me because this box will just keep expanding as long as I'm typing. So if I want to start a new line, 
I have to hit the Enter key. And then that'll allow me to type on the next line. And you'll also notice that I have a large space here between the left side of my box and the text. And this is because I still have indentation of the first line set to a large value. And since I press the Enter key after typing 3, then this next line here is also a new line. And so all of these lines will be indented. So I'll go ahead and reset this to 0. And now let's take a look at some of the options that we have available to us using this dialog box right here. And using this dialog box is very nice because we can apply some of these options to individual characters or individual words. So for example, I'm going to select this first word here, and you just press the mouse button and drag over the letters. And I can set this text to bold by clicking this button right here. And I can also set it to italic letters by clicking this one. And then let me select the second word right here. And then with this button right here, I can apply an underline. And then I'll select this third word here, and I can apply a strike through. I can also change the font size of some of these words. So I'll select all of these words right here, and I'll change the font size to 100. And you can also change the font size of just individual letters. And so let me select the W here, and I'll change it to a font size of 25. And now we have a really small W right here. And I can also change the baseline of this text. So I'll select this first word right here. And then if I increase the baseline, you'll see that the text is rising up to the top. And this is handy if you have text that you want to be superscript or subscript. And this can also be applied to individual letters. So for instance, if I select this U and set this to a negative value, you can see that the letter moves down. I can also change the space between the letters by selecting the letters that I want to change. And then I use this option right here to set that. And so I'm going to increase this now you can see that the spacing between the letters is increasing. And I can also change the color of individual characters or words by selecting them and then click on the color button and then you can select a new color. And it's also easy to undo any of these changes that you've made. So for example, I can select the word to, and then this button right here lets me clear the style changes. And if I want to clear all of the changes, I just need to select all of the text and then press the clear button. So you can see that the text tool has a lot of capability now. So now I'll show you how easy it is to use some of these features to create this text layout that I have right here. So let's start with a blank canvas by going up to File and select New. And I'm going to start with a font size of 100. And then I'll just enter in some text. And then I'm going to hit the Enter key to get a new line. And I'm using a dynamic box here. And then I'll hit the space key because I want to indent just a little bit. And now the word GIMP here, I want to turn that to an orange color. So I'll select it, click on the color button, and select orange. And I also want this to be bold text, so I'll click on this button here. And the 2.8 text, I want to select it and reduce its font size to 70. And then I'm also going to increase the baseline. And I'll increase this to 25. And the next thing I want to do is to rotate this text. So I'm going to leave the text tool and select the rotate tool. 
and then I just click on the text that I want to rotate. So then I can just press my mouse button within this grid area and then I can rotate this around. And if I press my control key while I do this, it'll snap to some common angles. So I'll just keep rotating this until I get a 90 degree angle. And then come down here and press on rotate. And then next I'll select the move tool so that I can move this off to the left a little bit. And now I'll select the text tool again and click in a blank area here and begin typing again. And then I'll hit the enter key here to get a new line. And now my first word text here, I want to change the font size. And so I'll select it. And I'm going to change it to 130 pixels. And I'm also going to set it to bold. And I'll also increase the spacing between the letters. And I'll set this to 20. And then for the word tool, I'm going to change the font color to orange. And I want the word tool to be centered underneath the word text. And so I can do that by going over to the justify option here and select center. And next I want to reposition these two words right here. So I'm going to use guidelines to help me do that. So if I go up on top here to where the ruler is, and then I press the mouse button and hold the mouse button and drag down, I get a guideline. And I'm going to set the guideline until it's right at the top of the P in the word GIMP, and then release the mouse button. And then I'm also going to add a vertical guideline. So you go over to the left ruler, press and hold the left mouse button, and I'm going to drag this until I get to the left side of the 2.8 text. And when you pull these guidelines onto your image, it automatically changes the function to move. So you'll see this button right here selected. So now I can just go over to this text right here, press and hold the mouse button, and then just drag this over here. And I'm going to line up the T to where my two guidelines intersect. And now the top of my P and the top of my T line up, and the left side of this 2.8 and the left side of the T also line up. And there's one more thing that I'd like to line up. I want the top of this 8 to line up with the top of this T. So since I'm still in move mode, I can just click on one of these guidelines that I've already created, and I'll just pull it down, and I'll line this up with the top of the 8. And now I can go back to my text tool, click on that, and then I'll click on this text right here so I can turn on editing mode. And then to line up the top of this T with the top of this 8, all I need to do is to change the spacing between these lines. And I can do that by setting this option right here. So I'll just increase this until my text lines up. And that looks good. And now my text is currently on two different layers. You can see over here on the right that this text layer is what I'm editing right now. And the layer right below it has the text that says GIMP 2.8, which I previously rotated. So with this top layer text selected, I can combine it with the lower layer text by right clicking, and then I'll select Merge Down. And now all of this text is contained on a single layer. And I can reposition this text by selecting the Move tool. And then I'll just pull this into position to center it. And then while I still have Move selected, I can move these guidelines off of the display. You just click on them and pull them off to the edge. So you can see that this text layout right here was very easy to make using the new text tool. And being able to edit the text directly on the canvas is very nice. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.